Hello everyone and welcome back to another video with the adventures of the memory makers. It's a rainy Sunday here in southern Indiana so I thought now would be a good time to finally finish up a project that I've been working on for gosh the better part of nine you know maybe closer to a year now because right after I got the camper I started looking for the parts to do this project and I've ordered in countless units from different companies and wound up returning a lot of them but at the same time, I've wound, on, wound up holding on to several as well. And what I'm talking about is today we're going to be adding a third brake light to our Bushwhacker 10 HD teardrop. On a lot of teardrops, you know, just like the Bushwhacker, they put the brake lights really low on the backs of the campers. And they're so low that to, with today's high vehicles, like in my Chevy uh, Silverado 1500, it sits so high that the viewing angle from my eyes over my hood I got to be back over 20 feet before I can physically see the brake lights on this camper because they are so low. So I know if I have a hard time seeing those brake lights, then other drivers as well are going to have a hard time seeing them. So the, the, the federal government does not mandate third brake lights on trailers or campers like this. So you can bet most manufacturers not going to be putting them on there. But it's something that I want, something that I think will be very beneficial to have because it's going to give more awareness to people behind us. And today with all the distracted driving that's going on, you know, anything that can help catch the attention of the person behind you may potentially save them from wiping out the back of your camper. So this is something that I really wish I could have done when I had the galley all tore apart. If you follow our channel, you'll know that we've, you know, gutted our galley and, and part, other parts of the camper and totally redone it. Um, and I had that all opened up and that would have been the perfect time to have done this, but I couldn't find the right light. And like I said, I've ordered in countless units. Uh, here's just two that I, I didn't return because I thought I might actually use these on other trailers that I have. Um, and the thing about what I was looking for is one, I wanted it to look like it actually belonged on the camper. I didn't want it to be like something you just stuck on there and then ran the wires down the outside. I wanted it to, to seamlessly blend into the camper. And these probably would have worked okay. This one I was really kind of excited about um, because the wire came out in the middle. Um, but the other issue I had with it was the viewing angle of the LEDs just wasn't what it needed to be to be able to see from behind during the daytime. At night, you know, when this light, you know, goes full red, you know, you can see it about any, any direction. But during the daytime, these LEDs really need to be aimed, you know, horizontal back at the vehicles behind you. And I just couldn't find a light that did that. So the other day I was working for a customer and um, I was at her house working on her garage and her, her late husband's Tahoe was parked underneath the carport. And I just happened, we happened to be walking by it, you know, going to the garage and I stopped and I looked and, and I knew the Tahoe wasn't for sale because everybody, it's a really nice Tahoe from the early 2000s and she just won't let it go. Uh, but everybody always asks if it's for sale. And so I'm looking at it and she said, now, Sam, that's not for sale. And I was like, oh no, I'm, I know, but I was looking at that brake light. So I told her what I had in mind. She's like, oh, well, you can take the brake light with you and see if it'll work. And I was like, no, I'm not taking your brake light. So I got home that night all excited and, you know, I'm going to order a brake light number 12. And I get on uh, online and GM wants like $400 for that replacement brake light. That wasn't going to happen. But I found a replacement on Amazon for, I believe it was $49.99. And I'll put a link to the light uh, in the description. But the thing I really liked about it when it came in, and, and this was kind of funny. I don't know if it was because I have returned so many brake lights or if the company had had issues with them not fitting certain vehicles. But they actually emailed me and asked me for the VIN number of the Tahoe I was going to put that light on. So I had to explain to them, it's not going on Tahoe, it's going on a camper. And so they finally did say they would send it to me. Uh, and I told them I wouldn't return it even if it didn't work. So they, they agreed and they, they sent it to me. Uh, but when it came in, oh, I was excited because I, I temporarily mounted it up on top of the camper and I just ran the wires over the side. You know, it's not the way it's going to be when we're done here. But I just wanted to see if one, that's the, the light that I was going to be able to use. You know, And it looks good up here. It looks like it belongs there. And the great thing about it is the the angle of the Tahoe where they mounted that from GM on the Tahoe was really pretty similar to the back angle of our bushwhacker. So when I plugged it in and looked at it from standing back, the lights are shining about 180 degrees off, you know, you know, parallel to the ground. So you could really see it from behind during the daytime. So finally, after 12 different brake lights, you know, I got one that's going to work. So today's project is going to be 
you know, installing this light permanently on the camper, like I said, it's just temporary wiring off to the side. Uh, and, and again, it would have been so much easier if I could have done this back when I had the galley all opened up because it had just been run the wire down, hook it up and you're done. Now we've got to kind of fish the wire through the wall and get it down below the camper and then run up to the wiring box in the front and tie in. Now the one other caveat to installing a third brake light on a trailer, I'm going to set these down for a second, um, is if you know anything about the way they wire these lights up on campers and trailers and things, they run a common wire for the brake and turn signal for the right and left side. So when you get on the brakes, there's a running light wire. So when you you're just have the running lights on, the light is glowing. And then there's the brake turn light. So when you push your foot on the brake, it sends power to that those lights and they get brighter. When you select a turn signal, let's say the left turn signal, the ECU or the flasher module in your vehicle, depending on what you have, is going to modulate that power to that light and make it flash. It should be just as easy to be able to hook up to your, your brake wire on your, your existing light down here and run it up there and have it work. But if you do that, what will happen is, that, let's say you hook it to the left brake wire, what will happen is the moment you select the left turn signal, your third brake light's gonna start flashing. So, you know, I know on my Chevy's uh, 1500 Silverado, there's a dedicated wire and it was buried way up underneath the dash, took forever to find it, but that's a dedicated brake only signal wire intended to be used for the third brake light on my camper shell. So I finally found it up underneath the dash, ran all the way back, hooked it to my third brake light on my camper shell, works great. But they don't have that wire going through the seven wire whip plug that you have on the front of your camper to your tow vehicle. So you need to find some way to break that signal or get a clean brake light signal to run to your third brake light so that you just have the brake light on when you're on the brakes. So there's a real simple way of doing that. And I picked it up from eTrailer and it's made by Pacer Performance and it's a third brake light light module. And I'll hold it up here so that you can see it in the bag. And what that does is there's two wires to it and you hook it to both the right and left brake turn signal wire on your trailer. And then there's a green wire that goes away from it. And that is your power wire that goes to your third brake light on your on this case on our camper. And what that does is no matter if you select the left or the right turn signal on your, your camper, one of these wires is still gonna have a clean brake signal. And what this module does is it disregards the one that is flashing. So you get a nice, clean, solid brake light going to your third brake light. Like I said, it was $20 on e-trailer. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. So, you know, all told, we're up to about $70 now to get this third brake light, the parts that we need to hook it up. And now the only thing left is some wires, some ring terminals to hook it up. Uh, but the bigger challenge, you know, on this one is getting this wire down through the top of the camper, through the back wall of the camper, then down underneath the camper. And I've got a plan. Um, but here's the one caveat to this. The, when I redid the back wall of the galley, I don't know if I'm the culprit that did this. I think it's from the factory looking at it up through the hole, but there is a horizontal board in here about 12 inches down below the roof line that I've got to get my wire down through in order to gain access. So that may be the one, you know, little stickler in this, this whole plan, but, uh, I think it's going to be doable. Let me grab the brake light off of the camper and I'll show you why this light I think is going to be the, the perfect light to use in this application. Okay, I've got my Chevy Tahoe third brake light down off of the camper. And like I said, I just had it stuck up over some tape just to make sure that it looked like it's going to be what I wanted to use. And the nice thing about this versus some of the others that I've gotten in is if you look at the back of the unit, <clears throat> you can see that it is smooth. There's nothing sticking down below the elevation of the back of the unit. Now, when I got it, there were two little clips on each side. I was able to break those off and remove those and get rid of them. So it was, you know, just a nice smooth unit. So many that I got in were designed to go down in recessed areas like on camper shells or on the back of vehicles. But this one is just nice and flat. Now, the one issue I did have with it was, <clears throat> and if you look at it, I don't know if I can get a good shot of this in the camera or not. Looking at the back surface of it, it was not 
linear. It wasn't just a smooth, straight line. There was a bit of an arch to it to match the arch of the Tahoe roof line. So what I did was there was enough of a lip on the edges of it that I took it to my belt sander and started from the center and concentrated my efforts to the outside edges to remove that arch. So I've removed probably about 90% of the arch before I ran out of material to work with. So <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm fine with that because I can bed the, the fasteners and the wires with sealer, and then I'll take a bead of Proflex around the outside of the unit and seal the unit down to the, the top of the camper, and it'll look fine when we're done. Now, if you look at the side profile of this, you can see how it's kind of got a, a tapered top to it. Well, it's designed to mount with the high side towards the back, and the LEDs are actually aimed back in that direction. So that's what made this work where all the others would not, because this one, when it's at the angle of the slope of the back of the teardrop, those lights are shining parallel to the ground back at the person behind you. So it makes a, a much better daylight visible light. Uh, it's very light going to be held on with two screws. And like I said, we're going to bed those with sealer. So we're only going to have three penetrations to the roof, the two screws, and then the hole for the wire. So installation from that aspect ought to be very easy. Now, my goal is to keep the hole for the wire as small as I can. So what I'm going to do is actually solder some extensions. It, it doesn't come with a very long wire. It did come with some extensions that would plug in for different applications, uh, but it wasn't able to use those. So I've got some, some thinner wire, about uh, 16 gauge wire that I'm going to extend this with. And then I'm gonna use 12 gauge wire underneath the camper to run up to the front because the insulation jacket on that 12 gauge wire is thicker and it'll have a better abrasion ability than this thinner wire. But I'm going to stagger my joints with when I go to attach wires onto this. So I'm gonna trim off my ground wire up about an inch and then stagger those solder joints to keep this wire at a minimal diameter so I can try to get by with the smallest hole as possible. That may work, it may not. <laughs> the, uh, I may need to go with a little bit bigger hole in the camper top in order to get, I've got several extra long, they're called rifle drill bits that I'm going to use to drill down through that horizontal board in the back of the camper. I'm really hoping that I can get the wire through there without having to you know, go extreme and, and use a fish tape or something to, to get the wires down. So we're just going to have to see how this works out. I really think that horizontal board is there from the factory because I've, I've got a picture of it from my phone looking up into the wall. And it looks like the, the original factory wire is attached to it. And I don't remember putting that, that there. So, um, but like I said, again, if you have your galley tore open, get one of these lights and put it on then. Don't do it after the fact because then it just becomes a little bit more difficult. So... Let me go ahead and get started here. What I'm going to do is extend these wires first, and then I'll show you how I'm going to measure off to determine where I'm actually going to drill the holes at in the back of the camper, and I'll get back with you at that point. Okay, I've got my power and ground leads for my third brake light extended, and this is what I meant by extending or staggering the joints in the two wires. You can see they're not side by side, and what that does is it keeps that diameter of the wire smaller so it can go through a smaller hole. If I would have moved the positive up here beside the negative joint, then that would have made just a bigger, um, the need for a bigger hole to go down through the top of the camper for the wiring. So I'm trying to keep that hole as small as possible. Um, something neat that I stumbled onto a couple weeks ago is a 12 volt powered, let's see, light down, um, a 12 volt powered uh, soldering iron. And I don't know why I haven't had one of these before now. Um, it just, I was working one day soldering something together and I was like, I wonder if they make this in 12 volt because I was looking right at a 12 volt auto power plug and uh, lo and behold, they do. <laughs> so I ordered one in and I'm not the smartest person. You know, I'll, I'll openly admit that. So this came in, I picked all our mail up at the post office and packages and I'm driving home and I looked over in my seat and, you know, curiosity was killing me. I had to get it out. So I rip open the package and, you know, and here it is, you know, an, an automotive plug and right there in my dash is an automotive lead, you know, plug in. So I plug it in. One, I was just curious to see if it worked. Um, it works. It gets really hot, really fast. And the one thing I don't like about it is it's on this, you know, coiled cord. And, you know, this was plugged into my dash over here. I'm holding it while I'm driving <laughs> and somehow it recoiled back and burn a hole in my pants. <laughs> so it gets hot, it gets hot fast. It does a really good job. 
Uh, I'll put a link to it in the description as well. I think it was, gosh, 20 maybe $30 or something. But um, I, I've ordered more of them because I'm going to keep one in my truck, you know, and one in the camper. And it's just handy. You know, you got 12-volt power. You know, you don't have to go digging around, you know, trying to find extension cords, plug in your 120-volt soldering iron. So if you ever do any soldering, you know, they make 12-volt soldering irons that work really well. And that's what I used for that. So we've got the wire extended now. I'm going to shut the lid. Uh, and show you what I'm going to have to do in order to locate where the center open area is in that back wall. Okay, now comes a very important part of the project, and that is determining where to actually drill the hole in the roof for the wire to go down through. And if I can get around here to the side, you'll see that the hinge for the, the, the back galley door, uh, if I can get my head out of the way, oh, there we go, um, extends past the actual wall. So there's some, some depth in here underneath the wall that um, we need to account for. So luckily what I did do and I had everything apart was I put this SAE plug through that wall uh, and that is what powers our ARB annex uh, room light, or actually the light is in the awning, the ARB awning. Uh, but I shortened the leads up and it plugs right into this SAE port. And I bedded that in with sealer and, and the hole is no bigger than what it has to be for that to go in because these are notorious for deforming and then you'll get water, you know, down inside of your, your camper wall. But the nice thing about this is I know exactly on our camper where this wall section is at because of that plug right there. So what I'm going to do is just measure, just carry a straight line up and then measure from my hinge, which is a solid point here and measure back up and that will be you know the the line the area that i need to to place my holes at for the third brake light wire so it goes down inside of the back wall of the camper so i've already measured that and it's three and a half inches so i'm going to get the ladder out get up there make my marks and drill my holes and see how big of a hassle i'm going to have getting that wire down through that horizontal board okay up here on top of the camper what i've done is use some masking tape to establish the center line of the camper, which in this case, it is uh, 16 and a half inches wide. So it'd be 30 and a quarter from each side, which is what this line here is denoting. This horizontal little pencil mark right there, if it shows up, that's actual line of where I want to drill my holes at. So I've got my, my third brake light and I've put a piece of tape on it with a center line uh, for the actual center of it. So when I put this up here and line up these two lines, I'm having a light issue here using my headlight. Um, you can see the two lines line up and then that will put the, the third brake light in the center of the camper, which is where I wanted that. And then all I have to do is keep it parallel with my uh, galley hinge here and it will be sitting level to the camper. That's my thought anyway. So now what I'm gonna do is mark the holes I need to drill for the two screws. Uh, and I'll probably drill um, eighth inch holes there for my, my screws to go through. And then I'll drill that hole for the wire and show you how I'm going to get that down through the camper wall. Okay, I've made my marks here. They don't show up really well, but right here is the hole for the right hand screw. And then over here, we've got two marks. One of those is for the left hand screw and then the hole up here, half inch at about the uh, 130 position to the screw hole is the hole that we will use to run our wires down through the camper. So let me get those drilled and then uh, see what we're looking at down through the, uh, the top of the camper to get this wire ran. I think once we get this wire ran and get it accessed down inside the camper, uh, we'll be on easy street from there. Okay, I'm very excited to say we have success. <laughs> I, like I said, I had to go a little bit bigger on the hole for the wire. And the reason for that was so that I could use my flexible um, wire pulling flex fiberglass rods to to gain access to make sure i was down inside the wall cavity i needed to be in so i drilled my my first hole 764 hole here for the right hand screw and then i've got my 764 for the left hand screw and then i've got my hole here for the wire to go down through and it is a little bit larger than i wanted because of this fiberglass rod <clears throat> but i just didn't have a choice there were too many layers to go through there and i had to have a way to to fish that wire down through there. So one thing I will point out here is when you're drilling your hole, let's see if I can get back here far enough. So if you drill your hole perpendicular to the roof line at this point, 
and continue on through, you're going to come out somewhere in the cabinets in the back of this camper. So when you get this hole drilled, what you want to do is turn your drill so that it is 90 degrees to the world, not 90 degrees to the top of the roof. And that will allow you to go straight down through those plates inside this wall. Now, if you're working on a different type of teardrop, you know, you're just going to have to look and see what fits your application. But I know on this one, you know, we needed to have that hole, you know, start out 90 degrees to the roof, but then pivot and go 90 degrees to the world straight up and down to go down through those wood plates. So let me uh, grab a wire. Um, I use a uh, flexible wire to, to run wires a lot. So I'm going to grab that and tie onto my wire lead. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to get these wires down inside of the actual camper wall and then below the camper. So this really is going along a lot better than what I anticipated it, it could. So uh, fingers crossed it continues that way. So about right now, I bet you're guessing or wondering, how are you going to get that wire from the top of the camper down through this wall to underneath your camper to run up to the junction box for the seven-way wiring plug that comes from your tow vehicle? Well, on the Bushwhacker series, I know the 10, HD like this and the 10 SS that both have side air conditioners, just one on the other side from the other, they have a central return air vent for the factory furnace. And that's what this grill is. I'm holding on my fingers so if I ever got unscrewed. Uh, but what this is, is just a, it's just a cover to cover a big hole in this back wall. And then that allows the air from inside the camper to get recycled back to your furnace and then you know, comes back out as heated air. And that's the sole purpose for this vent. Now, the one bad thing about this vent is there's no return air filter. So if you're one to camp with your dogs and they shed a lot, um, or just dirt in general in the air in your camper, um, that's all going to get sucked into your furnace because those furnaces don't have return air filters. So I would highly encourage you if you're running the factory furnace to, to facilitate some type of filter with like a thin, cheap fiberglass um, central air filter um, that you can pick up for a couple bucks at your, your local hardware store or, or a big box store. Um, just to filter that air going through so you're not sucking all your dog's hair in through this because that sail switch, when it gets stopped, you know, gets, you know, something built up on it and doesn't allow it to work properly, then your heat doesn't work in the middle of the night. So we've switched to a Propex heater, and I'll share a link to that video at the end of this. Uh, but I made my own return air filter for that Propex heater just to keep the dirt and the dust, because we all know about the sawdust in bushwhacker campers. But back to this project. So in order to gain access to the inside of this wall, which is what I drilled down into from the top, what I did was this cover just pops off. There's, uh, there's holes or slots up in the top of it that you can just put a screwdriver. Actually, you can just use your fingers and pop it down, and the front cover will come off. And then there are four screws that hold this to the back wall. I've removed them, obviously, so this comes off and just leaves you with this hole. A uh, quick plug here for another Harbor Freight tool. Um, this is the Quinn 10 and one screwdriver. It's a great screwdriver for bushwhacker owners and probably camper owners in general, because in the 10 selections of bits and sockets that you have with this is the square drive socket that all these screws and the bushwhackers held together with uh, are, you know, they look like a Phillips and you can use some Phillips bits with it, but it's better to have that square drive bit. So that's included in this 10 and one screwdriver. It's just a very nice screwdriver. Uh, it's got bits for everything. It's got the sockets, you know, so you can use five sixteenths and quarter inch for that as well. I mean, for 10 bucks, it's a great screwdriver. I own a lot of them. So setting that aside, back to this deal. So I've already looked uh, inside of this and that's how I knew that there was a horizontal board. Uh, and I'll share some pictures of what it looks like. And I've got a picture of that yellow fiberglass wire running rod that I use from the top down. So I know that that will come down into this area. So what I've done up on top now is I've taken a piece of flexible wire um, and attached that to the wire lead from my third brake light. And I've got that ran down inside the wall. So what I'm going to do, I can't really see up in this wall unless if I take my camera and, and slide in there and take a picture of looking up, which is extremely handy to do sometimes. But I've got so much of that wire down inside the wall, that the lead wire or the running wire that I'm using, that I think I'm going to be able to reach up inside the wall here with any luck. Uh, okay, with no luck. 
<laughs> and find that wire. Uh, so what I'm gonna have to do is grab my camera and shine up in there with the light and find where that wire's at. Cause I know I got enough ran down in there. So it's probably hit something and ran horizontal. So I'm just gonna have to work here a little bit. Um, and I've got some tools that I can reach up in there and grab that wire and pull it down. Uh, but I need my camera right now in order to shine up in the wall. And I'll take a picture of what I see and, and share that with you. Uh, but my my lead wire that I'm going to use to pull this wire, the actual wire to the um, third brake light, is inside this wall. So I just got to merely capture it and bring it down and get it into this opening. And then once we get it to this point, then it's a matter of working down through the floor of the camper to get the wires ran from that point. So let me grab my camera, look inside the wall here and see what we see, and I'll get that wire brought down. Okay, here's what we've got. So I've got my yellow fiberglass rod up inside the wall, and you can see at the tip of that rod is where my wire is coming down through the roof. And when I say wire, it's like a coat hanger type material that I'm using to uh, bring that wire down. Uh, and I've got my actual um, wire lead from my camera, or not the camera, but the uh, third brake light wire attached to it. So what I'm doing is just using the hook on the end of this fiberglass rod to reach up there. And I'm working backwards to try to look through this camera and talk at the same time. Uh, but I, I'm going to hook it and pull that down here in just a second, maybe 10 minutes. You know, who knows? But so I'm hooked on it there. Um, and now it's just a matter of bringing that wire down. There we go. Kind of. There we go. And I'm going to take off a section of my fiberglass rod here and keep pulling that wire down. And I don't know what it hooked on inside that wall, <clears throat> but it got really hooked. Uh, you know, running wires is just always the most fun that you can have. But I got my fingers on it now, so now I can pull it down. We can actually see the wire coming into view. This is like laparoscopic surgery to your to your camper. All right, so now we've got the wire down inside the wall. So now all I got to do is try to get this uh, coat hanger wire unhooked from whatever it's hooked to inside the wall. And then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. Okay, here we are back on top of the camper. And before I run the wire from the light down through the floor, I'm going to go ahead and get it mounted up here on top just so I've got that out of the way. So what I'm going to do to make sure that I, I get this sealed up really well is I'm going to put sealer down the hole to begin with, and then I'm going to fill this area here uh, in the light. There's kind of a recessed area. I'm going to put a good um, glob of sealer in there, and if some of it oozes out and around of it, that's even all the better because I want a good bed of sealer because when I say bedding sealer in, what you're doing is putting sealer between your mounting surfaces. So it'd be between this, this screw port here and the camper itself. So when you screw that screw down, you're compressing that sealer and creating a gasket. Whereas if you just put a bead around the outside, if that bead breaks, then water has potential to get into your camper. So anywhere that you're putting something on the side of your camper or on the roof of your camper, always bed that with sealer by putting sealer between the two mounting surfaces and then screwing it down. Uh, so that you get that gasket material. It's one extra layer of protection than just having the, the bead of sealer around it on the outside. So let me grab my RV ProFlex here. And this tube is just about done for. So I'm going to put, put some there, which will probably make running those wires really hard. <laughs> I like making things harder on myself. So I'm going to put a big glob there and on that mating surface there so that that gets compressed. And over here as well. Get a big glob on there. So now, when I go to mount those two together, I will actually be compressing that sealer uh, between the two surfaces. And that's going to give me a much better bond than just trying to put it around the outside. So now it's just a matter of running those wires down and then lining up my marks here. And I can feel that sealer compressing down as I put my light in position. So now I'll get my screws. Get my marks lined up so my holes line up. 
I've got a good sealer coming up through the screw hole there. There we go. I've got sealer all the way up through the screw hole on this side as well. There we go. You don't want to over tighten these because you're just going down into that phylon material. So that's it. So the the third brake light is now mounted to the camper. And like I said, I'm going to go around it and seal around the outside edge as well, just for an extra layer of protection. But by bedding the, the light with sealer before you mount it to the camper, you get a much better seal. Plus you create that gasket with the sealer underneath this light. So now we're ready to go back inside the camper and get our light ran down through the bottom of the wall. And then it'll just be a matter of running the wire up to the, the front junction box and tying everything in. And then the last step, I'll come back here and seal this light down to the camper itself and we'll be done. Before we proceed with the next step, I want to show you what I was using inside the wall to uh, reach up and, and grab that um, wire. For one, this is the wire. I'm not sure how well it shows up, but it, it's actually rebar tie wire is what I use to run a lot of wires with. It's kind of flexible, but yet it's stiff enough that I can poke it through holes and get it to, to go where I need it to go. So, and small works well. Um, so that's the wire that I had attached to the, the actual wire coming down out of the wall um, from the third brake light. So then this um, kit from Harbor Freight, um, these are the short ones. They're, I don't know, they're probably 13 inches long each on the fiberglass rods. Um, these work well in campers because they're short enough to get in holes like that. Uh, I've got a longer set as well that have like three foot rods on that connect together. But this set here is, is really handy inside campers in small uh, confined areas. And then it has this attachment here, this little um, hook. And that's what I was able to reach up there and hook the um, the rebar wire, tie wire with it. I was using to run the wire down through. So, so I just wanted to share that with you so that you could see the tools that I was using to actually get the wire down through. Uh, into the the cabin area, which is what we are at, or where we're at right now. So there you can see my lead wire. Uh, it's exposed here in the cabin, and I've got it brought out of the hole. Turn some more lights on here. And now what the next step is is we're going to, and I'm going to stick the camera in here so you can see what I see uh, down inside. That's actually through the floor of the camper right there, looking down. So what we need to do is um, drill a hole down through that so that we have access to the underside of the camper. And you don't just want to drill your hole blindly down through that because um, we, you know, this is a different setup than what factory is. We've got propane lines underneath there for the Propex, wiring for the Propex. Um, our water pump is underneath the camper. So you want to take a second and go underneath the camper and verify where you're going to drill that hole at to get that wire down through there. And then I'm going to bring my 12 gauge wire up and tie onto this wire inside of the wall and then run that 12 gauge wire with the thicket jacket up to the, uh, the nose of the camper and tie in the wiring. And that'll be it. So let me go underneath the camper and take a look around and see where I can put a hole and then we'll get our wire ran up in here and go from there. Here we are underneath the camper and I'll be the first to admit things are really tight under here so I can't get you a real good view. But this right here is the, the signal wire coming from the thermostat for the Propex. Here are my power leads to the Propex, and I know where that is at in the wall itself or in the base of the wall in the camper. So I can put my hole, you know, about right here and be clear of everything because the next obstruction I have is the propane line, uh, which actually goes to our Camp Chef oven, which is over here uh, further to the passenger side. So I'm going to go ahead and drill my hole and get my wire up through the floor here, and then I'll get back with you. If I already ran the wire from the nose of the or the front of the camper back to this point. So I've got that, you know, already stubbed off here. So I'm going to drill my hole here, get it up through the floor. And once we get everything done, we'll seal this with a ProFlex sealer as well. And uh, we'll get this connected inside the, of the, the, the inner wall or between the two walls, front and rear wall of the camper. And then we'll be ready to move up front and make our final connections. Here I have the wires connected inside the wall now. And like I said earlier, the 12 gauge wire is, is way overkill for the amount of load that this is going to be pulling for that LED light. But the jacket of the 12 gauge wire is very substantial. So with it being run underneath the camper, 
you know, an abrasion, you know, you don't want your wire rubbing through on something. So that's going to give me a little bit more protection there. So I'm going to push this back in the wall, get it all buttoned up, and then I'll go underneath and we'll make the final connections up to the front of the camper, tie the wires off, then seal off the third brake light, and we're done. Here we are underneath the nose of the camper, and you can see my 12-gauge wire somewhere here. <laughs> there it is, uh, that I've got ran from the third brake light on the back all the way to the front. Here is our, this is a really nice junction box that they put on campers. You take the two screws off, you can pull the cover off, as long as you don't proflex it on like I did. <laughs> when I sealed my um, protector here for the house wrap, I got some proflex on the back side of that lid to this and, and closed it with it on it. And oh my, it was a, it was a chore to get that off. <laughs> so you open this up and you see you got a nice terminal block in here. Uh, that all the wires from the seven wire plug that comes from your tow vehicle, they come in here and tie to this junction block. And then these are the wires that go back to the camper to run the 12 volt electronics on board the camper uh, for lights and, and things like that and the brakes for your trailer. Um, the interesting thing is the campers don't use the same wiring schematic as a trailer plug does. So you need to either find the wiring schematic for your camper or pin it out to determine which wires you actually need to tie into. So I've already pinned this out. This red wire here on the top actually runs the left side turn signals. And then the brown wire here runs the right side turn signals. So we're going to take our module, which is just out of reach, <laughs> and we're going to put ring terminals on it and tie it to these two terminals here. And then the green wire from that module will then tie to the red wire here, go into that. And then our black wire here for ground will tie to the ground terminal over here. And it's as simple as that. There's enough room up inside this, like I tuck that little module inside of this box, shut it all up. And if the manufacturer would have used the correct grommet on the side here for the wires, it would have been a nice sealed box. But you can see... Uh, the grommet is not there. They just merely clamped it down. So I'm going to use some black tape and seal this up the best I can to keep water and stuff out of this box. Um, but really nice box, nice junction box, works really well. And like I said, if you don't know which wires you need, just pan it out and figure out uh, on your camper which wires you need to tie into. So I'm going to get my wires tied together here and I'll get back with you once I get everything taken care of and uh, show you what the finished product looks like. Here we are with all the wiring taken care of. And what I've done, the ground wire from the, the third brake light comes over, ties to the ground terminal over here on the terminal block. This is the power wire that comes from the green wire on the third brake light control module. And then one yellow wire goes to the left turn signal stud, one yellow wire goes to the right turn signal stud, and then it all will tuck in underneath the lid. And I've already checked it out, verified that it works. Now this is a control logic, so it's a you know, integrated circuit that it has to be one hooked up correctly and then two powered up correctly. So it, it wants to work off of the tow vehicle um, when it has both the brake signals coming to the, the studs and then the one intermittent turn signal. So if you try to power it separately with a battery, it's not going to work. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so uh, it works fine now. I'm going to button this up and then I'll show you what it looks like from behind the camper. Here we are with everything hooked up and working the way it should. The truck is hooked up to the camper through the garage door because it's raining outside and I'm already wet. <laughs> so you can see we've got the brakes on. We've got clean signals to both brake lights and the third brake light up on top. Now, the way that my truck is wired, thanks to GM and their crazy logic, the ECU signal changes to the brake lights so that in order to get that brake light module to work, the truck has to be running. I have no idea why I didn't wire the truck. Um, ask GM on that one. But once you fire the truck up, it functions exactly the way it should. So let me turn on a turn signal here and I'll show you how it works with a turn signal operating. Now I have the left turn signal selected to the on position. And you can see, obviously, the left turn signal is blinking down below. But we still have a nice clean signal to that third brake light up on top. And that's what that control logic does is it senses that the left turn signal is being modulated. So it 
tells the third brake light to ignore that signal and just use the solid signal coming from the right hand turn signal brake wire. Let me turn on the right side and we'll show you that it functions as well. And here we have the right side blinking and nice clean signal still going to that third brake light up on top. So it functions just exactly as it should once you start the truck. So, you know, go figure on that one. But uh, overall, very pleased with it. So there we are. You know, a five minute project took uh, like five hours. <laughs> but part of the reason for that was because I was filming this video. And if you've ever filmed a video for something like this, you know that if you're trying to do that and work at the same time, it just compounds things. I think overall, it looks great. I mean, it looks like it belongs on the camper. You know, all the wiring is concealed inside the camper. It functions just like a third brake light should function once you start my truck. You know, and that's, that has nothing to do with the brake light. That's all GM's crazy control logic. So overall, I'm very happy. You know, it was a long time coming because like I said, I've got multiple third brake lights that I bought that didn't work or weren't, were not going to work the way I wanted them to. So this one you know, fits. It looks good. It works. Two thumbs up. I, I'm happy with it. So I appreciate you guys watching this video. You know, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this might help you add a third brake light to your camper or, or trailer. Uh, it's all going to be done the same way, uh, even on a camper shell. You know, you need that control logic module to break out that clean signal when you select one of your turn signals. So hopefully this helps you. You know, if it does, you know, click that like button, hit the subscribe. You know, be sure to share this video with your friends and come back and check uh, out our next videos when they come out. So thank you very much and happy camping.